Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing how to use SML French with ease as a main uh, resource. It is to be noted that the one I am showing here is from 1998. It is the 1998 version of this book. The difference between newer and old version is print quality. Some stories are also different to add new modern voca day vocabulary. Its newest version has fewer lessons than old ones. Other than that, all of these books teach the same way. Their teaching and study methodology remains the same. This book had its own instructions on how to use it. But after finishing it more than 7 times, I realized there is a better way to do it. I am an expert language learner and I believe my methods will help you new students more. Alright, let's get started. So I am assuming here that you are doing one lesson each day. How many lessons you can do depends on how much time you have. You can do 2 or 3 or more lessons. It's totally up to you. Just remember one thing, you will need to do revisions every day. But revisions are very quicker compared to first time study. I will explain more in video later. In first read, I will play audio and read the line, read the text line by line, making sure I am pronouncing words correctly. Audio can be on your phone, computer or mp3 player or anything else that you have. Also, I will be studying the translations. Along with that, I will check the grammar points too in each sentence. It all looks something like this. Première leçon. Première leçon. À Paris. À Paris. Remember, pronunciation is very important. Make sure that you are pronouncing words correctly. Otherwise, you will de develop another type of language when you are speaking. So, it's very important. You are not only learning French, but you are not only the reading French literature, but you are also practicing your speaking and listening skills. So, very important. Pardon, madame. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Le métro. I'm going to pause it here. So, I'm going to repeat again. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? If I need to repeat this again, if I need to listen to the audio again, not a problem. I will just come back. And read again. Pardon, madame. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Où est le métro Saint-Michel? It is to be noted in later stages of the uh, of this uh, book. Audio will uh, fast will become fast, similar to how naturally French people speak. Okay. Now I'm going to read the um, translations. Pardon, madame. Excuse me. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Where is the metro station Saint Michel? Okay, now I know the translations. I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna just read the sentence and translate in my head. Pardon, madame, où est le metro Saint Michel? Indeed, at this point, since it's only one sentence, yeah, most likely you will have memorized the entire sentence easily. Okay, now I'm gonna study the grammar points. So, number one, it written. So, I'm gonna go with the number one. So, I will read it all. French is quite a formal language in any case, and the use of monsieur and madame when addressing strangers of almost any age is a general rule. And now for num okay, so as you can see, number one is further extended here, so I will read this too. And after that, I will read the number two, uh, the number two uh, grammar instructions. So once these are clear, they are in my head. I will now proceed to sentence number two, three, four, five, six, and there's also other sentences down here. So up to sentence number 10. So, I will finish it all. This is my first read. It is to be noted that this read, this first read will take the most amount of time. So, be patient with it and read it as slowly as possible. Make sure it's easy for you. Alright, I have finished. Assuming now that you have uh, finished up to a last sentence, go back to the start. And this time, I will read the entire story. I will read the French text first, then I will translate it in my head. Then I will check the translations to make sure I am right. This step will be much quicker than the first one. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Now I am going to translate it in my head. Pardon, madame. Uh, excuse me, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Where is the metro station Saint-Michel? Now I am going to Check my translations. Pardon, madame. Excuse me, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Where is the 
my translation same Michel and my translations were correct all right so this process so this step is also complete I have uh, read it completely till up to the last sentence I will go back again and this time I will only read the French version but this time I will not translate in English I will read the text and directly think of the situation with memories just like we do with our native languages we don't translate in our head we directly picture things in our head this will be weird and difficult and start but every day as you do it it will become normal and this step is very crucial to ease your language learning process if I get stuck with the meaning of vocabulary only then I will check the English translation this is what it looks like practically so sentence number one Pardon, madam. Où est le maître Saint Michel? As I was reading the sentence, I was thinking of the conversation, the situation they were in. Now let's just go to the second uh, sentence. Le maître Saint Michel attendait une minute. Now over here, I will assume that I don't know the meaning of this word attendait. So I will look at it. Uh, attendait une minute. Wait, I mean okay. So attendait means wait. Now I will read the sentence again. Le maître Saint Michel attendait une minute, and I will not look at the translation. And this time, the word attendait, I know what it meant. And simply, I will go like this. Uh, I will go through all the way to sentence number ten, the last sentence, and only I will only look at the translation if I need it. I will be uh, completely thinking in French in my head. I will not even be translating in my head. If I don't, I will only look if I forgot what that sentence meant. After I have completed the, the entire story again, I will go back and read again in French only. And again I will be thinking in my head. Now I will read through the entire passage. Again up to the last sentence, the entire story, to the end of the story. Now if uh, again there were some words coming in the sentences that like I kept forgetting, I will simply read again and then again fifth, six times. But typically this is not needed. When I was studying this, on my third on my third step, yes, I, uh, there were times that I would forget the vocabulary. But on the fourth time, in most of the cases, I already remembered what this entire story was trying to say. I was able to think in French. And if you, let's just say, you know what, let's just say, not fourth. You managed to do this in fifth. You read it on the fifth time. And every single uh, word in the, in, in the story, you understood. You, you knew what it meant, congratulations, this story is now embedded in your head. But please, not everyone is equal. If you want to study 5th, 6th, 7th time, go ahead, do it as required. You can study as you like, there are no hard fast rules. You can read it 5th time, 6th time, 7th time, as long as you are sure that, uh, as long as you are 100% sure that this story is now inside your head. After this step, I will look at the text and play the audio at the same time to read. And at the same time, in my head, making sense of the meaning of this conversation. It is to be noted that I will not be translating in my head. I will just be reading. Uh, I am reading and listening, but not translating English. I will be directly uh, connecting the French language to my, to my memories. So, it looks something like this. À Paris. So, as I am listening, I am reading à Paris in... Uh, so, I am not translating English and I know what it means. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Le métro Saint-Michel? Attendez une minute. And like this, I will study the entire uh, story again, up to, up to a last sentence. And if, the, if, you, if you had difficulty, you are pausing again and again the audio because your brain was failing to process the French information uh, properly. Not a problem. Repeat this step again and again. Read and listen, read and listen together. And do it until you can uh, understand at the speed of uh, the speaking speed. If you can understand it, uh, understand it while reading and listening, proceed on this next step. Okay, so in the last step, this is what I do. Now, I will close my eyes and listen to the whole story again and I will be making sense of the conversation. No reading this time, only listening and thinking in French, knowing the translation, very important. 
looks something like this. À Paris. Pardon, madame. Où est le métro Saint-Michel Le métro Saint-Michel Attendez une minute. Now I'm going to pause here. Let's just say um, if a sentence is spoken and I did not immediately understood it, not a problem. Pause the audio, process the information. Once you understood the uh, sentence, then go to then go to the next sentence. Nous sommes au boulevard Saint-Michel. And this is pretty much it. I will do it for the entire story again. And if you want to, you can repeat it again. Typically at this stage when I'm closing my eyes and listening, I had zero difficulty in understanding. It, everything is pretty quick. I already know what this sentence means. And this story, this version, this French now is now embedded in my head. And I'm just, and you are just now one step closer to learning better French. Your French will improve. Okay. After the story reading is done, now it's something like this. I come down over here. So, yeah, this is the exercises. Now, I, after all this, I come down here and do all the exercises. It doesn't take long to finish. It's another step to reinforce French language. So, make sure to do it. So, what are the exercises here? Je suis à Paris, nous sommes à Paris. I am at Paris, uh, we are at Paris. So, just translated. Uh, I am at Paris, we are at Paris. Yeah. Who is you? Are you sure? Are you sure? So my French level is very, very developed right now. So these exercises are like nothing to me. I can very easily understand it. And the next exercise would be fill in the blanks. So this is, I'm going to just uh, fill in the blanks. Vous êtes à Paris, vous êtes à Paris. So I actually have a book version of this. This is just PDF. I have a real, real book. I recommend not writing it in the book over here. Instead, uh, when you read this, when you read this, make sure, make sure this uh, lower level don't, this is the, so, oh my god, I'm actually using my finger. So my, my mouse, as you can see, this area here is actually the, uh, uh, these are the answers of these uh, questions. So make sure you don't look at it and if possible, hide it. But just look at it, uh, so you are going to write it. Don't worry about spelling, make it, write it wrong. Don't worry about it. At this stage of language learning, you don't need to worry about spelling. Just write it vous êtes à Paris and do it, do it like, do it with two, three, four and five out of this. Once you're done, uh, go and check, uh, go and uh, check the copy and match it with the answers in the book. So, so just what I'm trying to say is that don't write, I'm again using my hand. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, don't write in this fill in the blanks inside the book. Uh, instead, do it in a separate copy and then check it uh, cross references with the book. If you, you know what, like, you know what, let's like just say you are doing a revision and you also want to do exercise in it, then uh, you, as you have already written the answer, it will be permanently there. So just don't do it. Uh, use a separate copy for uh, answers and you are good. And these are difficult exercises. These are very easy exercises and it, it will reinforce French in your head. So don't skip it. All right. So today is day two and now I want to read the second lesson today. So I will again follow the same steps as day one for the new lesson. And once I am finished, I will go back and revise the old lesson. First I will read the text without translation in English, making sense of the situation. Then I will read again and translate in English sentence by sentence, then check for accuracy. And then again read it without translating. You do not need to use audio if you want for revisions. It's totally up to you. I mean, if you want to use audio, sure, but I didn't feel the need to use it. I didn't know how, the, how to correctly pronounce it. The reason for this revision is to reinforce this lesson in long term memory. I cannot emphasize this enough, but revisions are very commonly skipped by students, not just language students, but other students too. And they are very, very important in reinforcing, uh, reinforcing the things you have studied on day one. So, make sure to do it. They don't take long at all. The revisions are very, very quick. Let me show you how it will look like. So, I will go back. Once I'm done with, uh, with the second lesson, I completed it. I will go back to the first one. And first, I will read it directly in French. No translation directly in French. Alright. Even if I come across a word that I don't know, not a problem. 
I will keep continuing. So first one, I, uh, so I'm going to just uh, read the first two sentences. Pardon, madam. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Le métro Saint-Michel. Attendez une minute. And I'm going to do it all the way to, to number 10 sentence. Now, now when I'm going to read it again, this will be something like this. Pardon, madam. Pardon, madam. Excuse me, madam. Où est le métro Saint-Michel? Where is the métro Saint-Michel? Where is the métro Saint-Michel? Okay. And now, let's just say I kind of not understand the grammar structure here. I will, let's just say this two part. I'm going to read it, read it over here and reinforce and put the grammar there. So there you go. Uh, grammar, if needed, grammar will also be revised. And now I will read it again for third time. Pardon, madame, où est le métro Saint-Michel? And I will just go all the way to number 10. Now, in terms of exercises, I mean, if you want to revise it, sure, revise it. But I didn't revise exercises when I was doing revisions. I mainly started with the main stories. So, but if you want to do it, you have the time, go ahead. It all depends on time, how much study you can do. So, yeah, this is, uh, this will be the day two of mine. One new lesson and one old lesson. Now let's go to day three. All right, today is day three. So I will just go to lesson number two. Now lesson number three. And I'm gonna do it exactly as, uh, I'm gonna study it exactly as uh, I study new languages, read it multiple times, just like I did in day one. So I will do it. Then I will come and revise the second lesson. After that, I will go and also revise the third of the third lesson which was the first one the you know day three the third previous day so i will do that and now there comes a question so how many regions do you need here is my answer to all the students that i mentor minimum i recommend is revising last two days of studies Revisions are quick, so they are not difficult at all. With that said, if you can do more, that's great. Look, revisions are very, very important in studies. All the hard work you did on first day will almost be wasted if you don't revise the next day. Revisions take much less time also. So it's very easy to do. I used to revise the five days, the last five days of studies um, every single day. When I, was, when I did the new lesson, I would uh, go and revise the uh, previous uh, five lessons that I studied and this was my that amount of time I had uh, this is how I used to study uh, SML but the minimum recommended is last two lessons when you do one new lessons go back and also do uh, last two lessons how much more you want to revise well I will leave that to you I mean uh, it, I, not everyone has uh, a lot of time on their hands so yeah, revise as much as possible and you are all good. One more thing I want to say here. I am, in this video, I showed that I am studying one lesson a day. You can study more than one lesson a day. You can study three lessons, four, five, depends. With that said, when you are on a day one of SML book, completely new, I don't recommend doing more than one uh, lesson. First, uh, on day one, start easy, start slow. With all books, all materials, I, I start very slow at the start and then gradually upgrade myself so I don't get burned out. So on day one, study lesson one. Then then on the next day, maybe do three lessons if you want to. If you could, you are able to digest that. Maybe do four or five on the next day. But just keep in mind, whatever studies you do, go back and revise them. Revisions are very important. Without if you don't do revisions, all this, this hard work will be wasted. So please do your revisions. Now, what happens if you finish the entire book? Once you finish the book, read it again at least one more time. It will be super quick. When I was revising, I finished the first 50 lesson in just two hours and I was doing it very slowly. So like I said, revising is very quickly. I'm not sure how long you will, it will take to finish this book, but revising will be super quick. In fact, you can do it in a single day. I mean, if you have the that much time, you know. Also, when you reach lesson 50 of this book, you will need to translate back in opposite way. Let me actually go to lesson 50. Okay. So this is lesson 49, the end of lesson 49. If you see, if you read these instructions, you can pause the video and read it if you want to, but I will just simply clarify this. It is instructing you to go back from now on when you, this book is saying that when you do the lesson number 50, I'm again using my hand. 
when you go to lesson 50 of the book and then once you read the new book go back to lesson 1 and this time translate it in the opposite way from English to French so you will be like excuse me madam pardon madam where is the metro submission where is the metro submission it's not very difficult at least for me it was not difficult but to, to do it and again the purpose for this is to further reinforce uh, French in a very proper way in your head if you want to do it sure I actually did it I and it wasn't very difficult but if you for some reason you don't have time whatever uh, you can skip this part there were in fact actually when I was studying there were some days I would skip the, these lessons I would study new lessons and I will like do the new lessons but I would uh, in the end not translate not uh, like uh, do the opposite translation uh, I would not come back and translate from uh, English to French so there were days but I did it it was not difficult like you, uh, by the time you are translating it from English to French your uh, French will be much more developed so it's not very difficult do it if you if you can actually you know what you should do it find some time right? it's not difficult maybe you know what you do in the morning the new lessons and just end the night do the uh, do, do this lesson in the opposite way so it's not that difficult at all and it will help you a lot so this video was about how to use sml book as a main language learning resource in the next video i will teach you guys how to properly use it as a side side activity as a side material and in fact um now there now not even now the position of not everyone will be equal but in most cases when you are learning i think using it as a side activity would benefit you more i will explain more in that video why that is better than uh, using sml book look i love sml book i have made a complete review on it just look how many good things i say about it i love it i think everyone should read a book uh, read the sml book if they can if it's available for their languages and it's very very well done but not as but when it comes to using it as a main resource i don't think it's the best book it's it's like a, as a side activity uh, i mean it's a good book doesn't matter if you like use, use it as a main resource or side side resource use it as long as you use it it will benefit you so using it as a side resource will be really really good and i will tell you exactly how to do it in the next video so make sure to watch that and later on i mean after you can watch you have watched this video you can also watch that video you can finally decide in your uh, by yourself that you know what which which one suits you uh, you the best so uh, in my case so in future when i am do, uh, using sml i'll be doing the main grammar lessons whatever lesson it is video course book whatever it is i'll be using it uh, as uh, as a uh, main learning activity and on side i will be doing sml reading so make sure to watch that video more, uh, more i will put more details there and other than that if you found this video helpful make sure to like it it really helps the channel it tells youtube that this video is useful other than that i will see you guys again